right in front of me I guess it all that I will need Is my curiosity A tiny little seed Becomes a jubilee It's a glorious sanctity One of splendid poetry Let's believe what the breeze goes into day. Another amazing grace. Let's believe. Let's just open every door so we can all get out the word on the brightness. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church Online Worship. And thanks to Steve Fulton, another local Boise artist, for bringing that beautiful music today to open our service together. Let's believe. Let's believe what the breeze will blow in. Let's believe what the Holy Spirit will do, what amazing grace will happen when we welcome God's presence among us in our worship together today.
The Gospel According to Matthew Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics, sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come to it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. Be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against their parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone far through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the Gospel of our Lord. So I'd like to start off by asking a question. When is a time in your life when you have felt truly welcomed by someone? When has someone offered you hospitality in a way that just made you feel like you were at home, that you were accepted and could just be yourself? Maybe you wanna take a moment just to reflect on that now, pausing. Um, in this worship service, or maybe you want to talk about it, a memory that you have with someone who you're participating in this service with right now. But I want to ask you these questions as a way to help you understand what Jesus is getting at, getting at in the gospel reading for today when he says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. So let me share with you a time when I felt truly welcomed by someone else. It was when I just had begun my ministry uh, years ago, I think it was over 30 years ago, and had moved to a new community, starting work at a new church there. My colleague invited me to go with him and participate in a local pericope group which means a group of pastors or other leaders who are reflecting on the readings for the upcoming Sunday as a way to help them prepare to write their sermons. And so I went with him, but as soon as I walked in that room, I immediately felt uncomfortable. First of all, I was the only woman, a lay woman as I wasn't yet ordained, amongst this group of older, more experienced pastors who all knew each other very well. After introducing myself to them, I then became very quiet, not saying a word. Until one of the pastors looked at me as we had gotten into the discussion and 
talking about a certain point in the reading, he turned around and he looked at me directly in my eyes and he said, and what about you, Gretchen? What are your thoughts about this? And I think what struck me about that, what I can still remember to this day, is the sincerity in his question when he talked to me. He truly wanted to know what I was thinking. Despite my initial feelings of being intimidated and feeling vulnerable in that group, something shifted inside when he asked me that question. I left that day feeling so welcomed, so much a part of that group, and left feeling that, yes, I wanted to come back and to be a part of that group once again. That experience is in direct contrast to another experience that I had just a couple years before that, Again, as a young lay campus minister, just in my mid-20s. After worship one day at a local congregation, the pastor, who was a colleague of mine, met me at the door and greeted me. This large pastor, fully robed, and with a booming voice as he put his arm around me just a little bit too tightly, looked down at me and said, and how are you today, young lady? Hmm. As I remember back to that moment, those feelings still come up in me again. Those feelings of feeling so small and demeaned, so powerless and trapped by him. As he greeted me, not as a colleague, but more what felt to me like I was just a young little girl as he patted me on the head. And I have to tell you, I did not feel truly welcomed at all. In the gospel reading for today, Jesus sends out his disciples on their mission and he warns them that they will not always be welcomed by others. In fact, he calls them to go out knowing full well that they will be vulnerable. They are to take no money with them, no suitcases, no coolers full of food. They are to travel lightly and simply to rely on the hospitality of others. Don't expect a red carpet welcome, he tells them, because you're going out into a hostile world. I am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. You'll be handed over to religious leaders, to political authorities who are going to try to stop you. Even members of your own family will turn against you. And yet, although he tells them that they will be rejected by some, they won't be rejected by everyone. As he ends his instructions and his warnings with the promise, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Well, I have to admit, if I'm honest, that I am the one who wants to do the welcoming myself. I am the one who wants to stand at the door of Augustana Chapel and Emmanuel Sanctuary and to be able to welcome visitors onto my turf. I want to be the one who gives that proverbial cup of water to those in need, to those who I deem are less fortunate than me. I'm the one who likes having the power to give and not be called upon as the one to receive. But maybe that's what Jesus is trying to teach me in this gospel text for today, that sometimes it can truly be more blessed to receive than to give, knowing that when we are the ones who hold all the power, just as that pastor did when he greeted me at his church door, that we then distance ourselves from others so that we aren't truly welcoming. What I hear Jesus calling us to today is to let go of our own power, 
to become ourselves those little ones that he talks about. Becoming vulnerable by placing ourselves on the same level as others so that together we may receive God's welcome to us both. Someone who has helped me to understand the gift of what it is to be vulnerable in relationship to others and to God is a woman by the name of Brene Brown. And so I invite you now to listen in on a conversation that she has with Krista Tippett on her program On Being as they talk about the gift of being vulnerable. Feeling vulnerable, imperfect, and afraid is human. It's when we lose our capacity to hold space for these struggles that we become dangerous. And it seemed to me that that's one way to describe what is happening in our culture and our political life. We have no space to be honest about that, to be vulnerable, to be imperfect and afraid together. And it's become dangerous. No, we don't, you know, on a micro level as individuals, we're not our best selves in fear. And collectively, we're certainly not our best selves when we're in fear. I'm thinking we've grown weary of that. I think we're sick of being afraid. And I think there's a silent, a growing silent majority of people who are really kind of thinking at a very basic human level, I don't want to spend my days like this. I don't want to spend every ounce of energy I have ducking and weaving. Mm -hmm. I don't know where we'll go next, but I really believe with every fiber of my professional and personal self that we won't move forward without some honest conversations about who we are when we're in fear and what we're capable of doing to each other when we're afraid. Right. It's not just that the things that go wrong for us are part of our wholeness, right? As you described, the, the vulnerability is what makes us, keeps us in but also that what goes wrong for us is part of our gift to the world. It's what enables us to connect and be compassionate. And I mean, that's a lovely way to think about, you know, the hard, possibly excruciating upside of the fact that so many of us are struggling and suffering right now. I agree hundred percent. I think it points to maybe one of the, the, the deepest paradoxes about vulnerability, which is, when I meet you, vulnerability is the very first thing I try to find in you. And it's the very last thing I want to show you in me. Mm. Because it's the glue that holds connection together. It's, it's all about our common humanity. Mm -hmm. And when we own our stories and we share our stories with one another and we see ourselves reflected back in the stories of people in our lives, we know we're not alone. And to me, that's the heart of wholeheartedness. It's the, it's the center of spirituality. To me, that's the nature of connection. To be able to see myself and, and hear myself and learn more about myself in the stories you tell about your experiences. When Jesus sends us out as his disciples, he does not send us out as biblical experts or as lecturers of theology or as somehow having the power on our own to transform people's lives. No, we are sent out simply as we are, in our vulnerable, imperfect, and frail selves, following Christ who became vulnerable for us, sharing our humanity so that we might share his divinity, welcoming him as we welcome one another. What does it mean to be sent out, to share good news? Well, for me, it means simply putting myself out there for others, sharing the story of how God has touched me in both the blessings and in the struggles, in both the good times and the bad, the joys and the sorrows, the successes and the failures. And if somehow through my life, maybe you can see God then in your life too, then that to me is the reward. That is the holy moment where we become both the givers and 
the receivers. That's it. Prayers of Intercession. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you send us out with the good news of your love. Help us to share our lives with others from a place of vulnerability, following the example of Jesus, who opened his arms of welcome to all from the cross. Give us passion to embrace your mission and a vision to recognize where you are leading us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide for all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care, accompany all who are in the deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned, including those who are struggling from COVID-19. Strengthen those who are in prison or who are awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you, especially those who are on our prayer list. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, you gather all in your embrace who have died including fellow Emmanuel member Florence Hank. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Sit at the welcome table one of these days. Oh, I'm gonna sit at the welcome table. I'm gonna sit at the welcome table one of these days. I'm gonna feast on milk and honey. I'm gonna feast on.
feast on milk and honey. Feast on milk and honey one of these days. I'm gonna walk beside my neighbor. I'm gonna walk beside my neighbor one of these days. I'm gonna walk beside my And now I invite you to the welcome table by the one who welcomes us all as he is the host and the meal. As we remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now as you take your bread, know that this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Share God's gift of love with all. Thanks be to God.